The company wouldn't talk to us about fracking and its water use, but the man whose ministry handed out those water licenses, Rich Coleman, did. We're told by the public that they weren't consulted and a massive 20-year license was granted to Talisman yeah. in the Wilston Reservoir. And that could have been a mistake in language by me. I mean, what I said, what we would basically, I was trying to say is that we would do the government process with regards to water licenses. But listen again to Coleman's words just months earlier in the legislature. There will be an extensive process of public consultation, discussion and negotiations with First Nations before anything would go ahead. Was the public consulted? I don't do that process as the minister. Do you I mean, know it's not my ministry. It's not your ministry? No, no. So you promised the public consultation, but it didn't follow It was, in, it was your... in a debate where I said we would follow the rules, we would do, the, do what is ever required with the public with regards to, uh, to, re to removal of water. And that process, possibly as my language, mis misunderstood what the process was, that's all. So this promise... There will be an extensive process of public consultation. It seems was just a misunderstanding. It all leaves Terry Webster wondering. Fresh water is the resource of the 21st century. It's more important than oil or gas or anything. And so for us to take that volume of water, contaminate it and get rid of it is foolish. Next, what is the government doing to make sure this is safe? A beautiful autumn day in picturesque Farmington, BC. This rural paradise drew Lois Hill here 14 years ago. A lot has changed since then. Today, it is one of the most fracked places in the Southern Peace Valley. The drilling was on day and night for probably three weeks and then the fracking for another week and we've got the uh, high-pitched whine scream actually of the compressors building up the pressure before they get the pressure high enough to frack the rock. Once the fracking stops, the flaring begins, a process where toxic chemicals are released through stacks. Lois says she and her husband were exposed to those chemicals one day when they drove by the site. You know, our eyes burnt, we were coughing, my husband threw up, we shut off the fan for the heater and drove fast to get out of the area. And uh, I went to the doctor a few days later because my throat wouldn't clear up. I had purple lesions on my, the back of my throat for about three weeks after that. And what did your doctor say? What He's, was the cause? He said, you've been exposed to something, you've inhaled something toxic. Fracking is not fail safe. Ben Parfit is an environmental researcher and author of an extensive report on fracking. He says there's plenty of evidence that shows fracking isn't safe. In uh, the winter of 2009, uh, there was a potentially fatal release of sour gas uh, near the community of Puskupe in northeast BC. The cause of, of that gas leak uh, was definitively linked to a buildup of sand from the fracking process in the well, which caused the well piping to corrode and break. But the majority of incidents have occurred south of the border, where Parfit says there are lessons to be learned. In the United States, we have seen um, clear incidents of explosions linked to migrating gas associated with fracking operations, and there is clear, unequivocal evidence of groundwater being contaminated in areas that have been subject to intense fracking operations. American studies have linked fracking to everything from contaminated drinking water to earthquakes. And last April, a congressional committee demanded the industry disclose what chemicals it pumps underground with all that water and sand. The report revealed a toxic mix of carcinogens, including methanol, diesel, formaldehyde, and sulfuric acid. Come on! Ah, oh, here we come. It's no wonder, says Wilma Avery, that with on, all Jack. those chemicals, she got on, sick. I was very, very sick after um, breathing in, well, I presume it was breathing in the fumes. I was so, I had a most dreadful cough. I lost 10 chickens and they were really sick. Your and chickens I was, died? 
Yes, my chickens die. Wilma lives on a farm near Tumbler Ridge, BC. She's surrounded by natural gas operations and calls her home the kill zone. And a gas plant to the east, and there's a gas plant to the west of me. There are at least six to eight gas wells down in the valley there, and they're proposed, and they're all multi pads. Which... So you're right in the middle of it? Yes. And I'm trapped. So an oil company might say, well, how can you say it's because of our flaring that you're falling ill and your chickens are dying? Because it never happened before. And now I can see there's a yellow haze which lays around the house when that happened, when that occurred. Come on. All right, don't be greedy. Wilma's doctor put her on heavy steroids and told her it was a classic case of breathing in noxious fumes. So she called BC's Oil and Gas Commission, as well as the company involved. You phoned them and said, you're gassing me. And what did they say? Oh, uh, that can't be possible. <laughs> uh, we'll look into it. And did they look into it? I don't know. How do I know? I didn't hear anything. They just kept on flaring. But Minister Coleman told 16 by 9 his government is listening. We're definitely not falling on, on deaf ears. We're going to do the health study. We're going to come in with baseline air studies and water quality studies because we need to do that, right? Whatever those studies show, when and if they happen, the rural landscape and lifestyle for these women has already changed. Let's be honest. Would you want to raise children here? Would you want to live here? No, you wouldn't. So they have absolutely uh, everything that I've invested into a property, which is really my retirement fund, is gone. The only choice we have is either to continue fighting, you know, hoping to get somebody's attention, and um, or move. I think next time will kill me, probably. You think these gases are going to kill you? Yes, I do. And no one's doing anything about it? No one's doing anything.